That 70s show aired its last episode in 2006, and in the years since, plenty has come out about the series cast. Some is tragic, some is shocking, and some is outright criminal. In the fall of 2017, as the Me Too movement was really picking up steam in Hollywood, Danny Masterson was accused of raping four women in the early 2000s while he was starring on That 70s Show. As the Los Angeles Police Department investigated the allegations, Netflix announced the release date of season four of The Ranch, a comedy series that starred Masterson and Ashton Kutcher. An uproar ensued and the streamer eventually terminated Masterson's contract. Masterson was formally charged with three counts of forcible rape in June 2020, the New York Times reported. In September 2023, he was sentenced to 30 years to life in prison in two of those cases. Quite a few people wrote letters to the court in support of Masterson, including his That 70s Show co-stars Kutcher, Mila Kunis, Deborah Jo Rupp, and Kurt Wood Smith. Kutcher and Kunis swiftly faced backlash for doing so, which prompted a controversial response from the couple on Instagram. The letters were not written to question the legitimacy of the judicial system, or the validity of the jury's ruling. Kutcher added, they were intended for the judge to read and not to undermine the testimony of the victims. An unnamed accuser told NBC News that the couple's response was upsetting and hypocritical. Soon after, Kutcher resigned from his board chair position at Thorne, an anti-child trafficking nonprofit organization he co-founded. Before Ashton Kutcher married his That 70s Show co-star Mila Kunis, he was in another high-profile romance that kept the tabloids busy. In 2003, Kutcher met Demi Moore through friends, and there was an immediate romantic spark despite a 16-year age difference. The pair married in 2005 in his first marriage and her third. But all was not so rosy by 2011, when Kutcher allegedly marked their sixth anniversary with an extramarital affair. According to Us Weekly, Kutcher reportedly spent the weekend partying at the San Diego Hard Rock Hotel, which included a hot tub three-way with a couple of young women. Women. Kutcher and Moore split up soon after and officially divorced in 2013. Though Kutcher never confirmed the accusations of cheating, Moore did issue a statement suggesting she may have been betrayed. It read, in part, As a woman, a mother, and a wife, there are certain values and vows that I hold sacred, and it is in this spirit that I have chosen to move forward with my life. She would later open up further on such alleged betrayals in her 2019 memoir, Inside Out. Since she was in her mid-teens, Laura Prepon struggled to maintain a lean figure. The actress told People in a 2020 interview that her mother actually showed her how to be bulimic. Prepon said, I think she was trying to help me in her own way. To her, being thin equaled success. Prepon said she could recall the time she was in a bulimic phase by watching specific episodes of That 70s Show. Back then, she'd blame her weight changes on her menstrual cycle and had to have varying wardrobes. Prepon never mentioned what was going on to her fellow cast members. She said, I was very, very private. I'd have spurts where I would get a handle on it and wouldn't do it for a while. Then something would happen and I would get triggered and the cycle would begin again. It took me a very long time to be comfortable in my body. Prepon told Parade that she eventually developed healthier habits and dropped fad diets, replacing rigorous exercise with stretches and organic nourishment. She would indulge in things like dark chocolate, butter, and cream and coffee whenever cravings kicked in. She explained, You have to use common sense and can't overdo it, but you can have your cake and eat it too as long as it's not completely hulkified. When Ashton Kutcher was still on That 70s Show in February 2001, he apparently saw a murder scene. In 2019, Kutcher took to the stand in the trial of Michael Gargiulo, also known as the Hollywood Ripper. NBC News notes that on the day in question, Kutcher had scheduled a date with Ashley Ellerin at a Grammy's after party. After making plans at around 8.30 in the evening, Kutcher made a call to explain he was running behind schedule. He was at Ellerin's door at 10.45 p.m. There was no answer when he knocked, but Kutcher noted in his testimony that the house was well lit. The actor cast a brief look through a window, observing what he believed was a wine stain on the carpet. He apparently gave it no thought and assumed he'd been stood up. Los Angeles County Deputy District Attorney Dan Aikerman told the court, We believe now the evidence will show that was actually blood, and Ashley had already been murdered. The following day, Ellerin's lifeless body was found by a roommate. Kutcher testified, After I heard about what happened, I went to the detectives and said, My fingerprints are on the door. I was freaking out. Gargiulo was reportedly given the death sentence for two counts of murder, including Ellerin's, and one murder attempt. Ukrainian transplant actress Mila Kunis started landing TV gigs at the tender age of 13, appearing in guest stints on shows like Baywatch and a small recurring role on Seventh Heaven. But while those shows might have been game for working with underage actors, the producers of That 70s Show weren't quite so kid-friendly. She admitted to People that in order to nab the role of Jackie Burkhart on the show at the age of 14, she pretended to be a good bit older than she really was. 
She said, I told them I was going to be 18, but I didn't tell them when I was going to be 18. As fate would have it, her first real kiss took place in front of the cameras that year. In character, she planted one on her future husband, Ashton Kutcher, who played her character's then-boyfriend, Michael Kelso, and was 23 at the time. If not for that so-called little white non-truth, she might not have ended up making the Jackie Kelso ship sail onto a romantic island of marriage and babies together. Of course, there was more to the story than just that. They played an on-again, off-again young couple on that 70s show, and got together in real life several years after the show's end. But Kunis and Kutcher didn't care for each other very much during the years they shared the screen. Kunis told Glamour in 2016, quote, "...there's nothing we don't know about each other because we've known each other for so long. The ugly, the bad, the good. We went through a period where I thought he was crazy. At the height of his career, I was like, ugh, I don't like you. I don't even know you anymore. You think you're such hot sh she added that even though they went through full friendship breakups over the years of working with and knocking each other, they always reconciled in the end. What ultimately brought them together was a mutual decision to become bedroom buddies without any romantic entanglements. Perhaps not coincidentally, both of them had starred in movies where that exact arrangement failed to work out. In 2011, Kutcher appeared in No Strings Attached, and Kunis appeared in the similarly styled rom-com Friends with Benefits the same year. And if we would have just paid attention to the, how those movies turned out, we would know that we can't go into a relationship this way. One of the most memorable minor characters of that 70s show was Leo, the pothead who works with Hyde and develops a friendship with the gang thanks to his marijuana connections. The character was played by Tommy Chong, who could have easily floated between his off-screen persona and on-screen alter ego for how similar they seemed to fans. But after regular appearances in the show's second, third, and fourth seasons, Leo disappeared from the group. His absence was the subject of a season 5 manhunt mission, after which only a goodbye note was found. He eventually returned near the end of season 7. In his big comeback episode, Leo explained his absence in his usual way. Yeah, just wandering around, trying to find my place in life. In reality, though, the reason for his time off the show was that he was actually doing time. In 2003, Chong was sentenced to nine months in jail for selling pot pipes. Talk about being far out. Actress Lisa Robin Kelly portrayed Eric Foreman's big sister Lori for the show's first five seasons, but her role was significantly lessened after the third season. She didn't appear at all in season four and only in a handful of episodes in season five. Thanks to her off-screen issues, though, she was completely replaced by Christina Moore in season six, after she decided to leave the show altogether. She would later explain her departure to ABC News by saying, I had lost a baby. As a result of that, I lost it. I lost everything and I was abusing alcohol. With that 70s show, I was guilty of a drinking problem and I ran." She claimed to have recovered from the troubles that sparked her departure from the show in time to make a celeb comeback, but she subsequently spiraled in the spotlight with a DWI in 2010, followed by allegations of domestic abuse in 2012, and ultimately her death from a drug overdose in 2013. The hatchet may have been buried over the time that's passed since the group left Point Place. But when Topher Grace and Kutcher left the show, Grace's departure was a little more cutting than his co-stars. When the two announced they would not return for season 8, Kutcher came back for a couple of salutary episodes in the new season, while Grace only stopped back by the Foreman residence for the finale. Grace has claimed there's no bad blood between them and that he's still close to all of his former co-stars. But he has still been noticeably absent from major show-related events, like the cast reunion in 2016 and Kunis and Kutcher's wedding. He said he was working on both occasions, but he's also the only major cast member who's had nothing to do with Netflix's The Ranch. He was also the only one of the major cast members who was never punked by Kutcher. Hey, I'm sorry, I just got swept away by the super good burn. It may have seemed a little out of left field that Donna's parents, the Pensiatis, suddenly got a divorce and Brooke Shields came along to play her dad's new love interest in season 6. But there was a very good reason for actress Tanya Roberts to take her leave of the series. Uh, yeah, it was Midge's idea. The former Bond girl reportedly left the program because of the news that her husband, screenwriter Barry Roberts, was terminally ill. She did end up coming back for a few episodes after a three-year hiatus, so there was obviously no bad blood between her and the show's producers for her decision to take a leave of absence from the role. Nowadays, Joseph Gordon-Levitt is something of a big-screen powerhouse with flicks like Inception, The Dark Knight Rises, and Looper under his belt. But in the late 90s, he was still just a former child star whose biggest claim to fame was playing an ancient alien on Third Rock from the Sun. 
Shortly before his breakthrough role in 10 Things I Hate About You, Gordon Levitt appeared in a season 1 episode of That 70s Show. He played Eric's pal Buddy Morgan, who had a secret crush on him and shared a kiss with him before being turned down. That on-screen kiss is credited as being the first gay smooch on North American primetime TV, but audiences reportedly hated it. What would have been a potential recurring role was relegated to just one episode appearance. It didn't hurt Gordon Levitt's career much, of course, but filming the scenes did leave a bad taste in his mouth. He told The Advocate that Grace was probably one of the worst kissers he's ever kissed. Oh, look at our poor little tough guy. Hurting others to ease his own pain. I think someone needs a tickle. Grace's longtime love interest on the show, Laura Prepon, echoed the kiss diss when she said on a radio show that her Orange is the New Black co-star, Taylor Schilling, was the better kisser of the two. Um. <laughs> Talk about bad lip service. If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual assault, help is available. Visit the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network website or contact Rain's National Helpline at 1-800-656-HOPE-4673.